Hi everyone, Caitlin here with Sass and Stitch Crochet and today I'll be walking you through the tutorial for the puffy floor mat. This is an adaptation of my puff quilt from earlier this year and I'm so excited to offer you this pattern for free. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to be using Bernat Blanket Extra Thick. This is rated 7 jumbo yarn. It is so thick. Each skein is only 72 yards. One skein will get you about three of these puffs. So in total, I used about seven skeins to make 21 puffs. Each puff square measures roughly eight inches as a square, so you can determine how big you'd like your mat to be. I did three squares across by seven squares long. You're also going to need a 19 millimeter crochet hook and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll start out by making a slip knot. I like to cross mine over reach my fingers through and grab the short tail and pull up. That's how I make a slip knot. Then you'll stick your hook in and we are going to start by chaining eight. So yarn over, pull your hook through the first loop on your hook and that is a chain. Repeat that for every single chain. So we're gonna be doing a total of eight chains. Now you may notice how I've been kind of pushing my hook in and out and twisting it. This is so that I get my loop onto the fattest part of my hook and making the loop as big as I can. You don't wanna just insert your hook and then pull it through, it's gonna be really tight. All right, stop and count and make sure you have eight chains. It may be a little harder to count with this fuzzy yarn, but kind of stick your fingers into each loop that you can feel to count along. See how I'm doing there. So I'm counting six, seven, eight. Now we're going to work our first row in half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So locate that second chain, yarn over, insert your hook into that second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through just that stitch that you inserted into, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. Make sure you push that hook back in like I was saying earlier. Okay, doing that again, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now before we get too far, go ahead and stop here, grab a stitch mark if you have one or a piece of yarn of a different color, and I want you to put that stitch marker into the first stitch that we did. We've done two so far, but go back into the first one. Place that stitch marker through that stitch. Because we're working with really fuzzy yarn, it's going to be really hard to tell where we've stopped and where we've started, so this will help you locate that first stitch again when we get back around. Keep working one half double crochet into each chain across, and when you get to the end, you should have a total of seven half double crochet stitches. And I do apologize for being a little bit out of frame here. I'm trying out a new filming method and sometimes I can't see quite where I'm crocheting in the view, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay, we've got seven half double crochet stitches and we're going to attempt to count them. When you, you count these kinds of stitches, try sticking your fingers in through the top loops of each stitch to count across. And I am counting seven for mine. So we've worked these first seven stitches along this side of the chain, and now we're going to turn our work over kind of upside down so that now the other side of the chain is at the top of our work, and we're going to place seven more half double crochet. Find that first chain with your finger like this and do a half double crochet into that chain. And you guessed it, we're going to be half double crocheting into each chain across. Again, like you see me doing here, I'm sticking my finger in through the next hole that I can feel, and that's how you can find what, what chain you should be working into next. It's tricky to tell just by looking at it. 
Continue working one half double crochet stitch into each chain across until you get to the end. By that point, you'll have worked seven half double crochet on this side of the chain and seven half double crochet on the other side of the chain, counting for a total of 14 stitches. Okay, I'm just working my last stitch here before the end. If you're not sure what stitch you're on, you can always go back to the stitch marker and count. So we've done the seven on this side of the chain, and we've done seven on the other side, and now we need to connect these two sides to form a loop. So we're going to be slip stitching into that first stitch, which is where your stitch marker should be. So insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the loop on your hook, and that'll be a slip stitch. So now you have a full completed circle. Remove your stitch marker, and we'll replace the stitch marker in the new first stitch in just a minute. Chain one, and we're gonna be working in the opposite direction now. We just worked this way, and now we're going to be working this way. So we'll need to turn our work, and we'll be working along the outside of the circle we've created. Now you'll remember that we just did a slip stitch to end our round from last time. That's right here. It's gonna be a bigger feeling hole. We're gonna be skipping over that and starting in the, the last stitch from the previous round. So not that big hole, but the one right here, the one that's that looks like it's the second stitch over, but it's really the last stitch from the previous round. Half double crochet into that stitch and we're going to be doing another full round of half double crochet. Go ahead and replace your stitch marker in this first stitch so we can easily keep track of that. And again, like I said, we'll be doing another full round of all half double crochet. Now, when you look at this, half double crochets have what's called a third loop. So you'll see the third loop kind of popping out here. That's when you look at the side view, you see this kind of row of the extra third loops. You're not going to be working into that loop. Instead, you wanna look at it from the top view and you'll find the two loops at the top of the stitch. Those are the two loops you wanna be working into. I know it's a little tricky. At the end of the day, it's not gonna make that much of a difference, but you wanna find those top two loops, not the side third loop. So half double crochet, do one into each stitch around. And again, we'll be having a total of 14 half double crochet stitches by the end of the round. Again, use your fingers to feel for the tops of those stitches. That will really help you out a lot. Usually in crochet, we rely on visual cues, but there are really poor visual cues with this kind of yarn. So it's all about feel at this point. I'm just continuing to work around my round here. <clears throat> the sides can be a little bit tricky to find where the third loops and where the top loops are, so just pay a little bit extra attention to that section. I'm going to continue working my way around and I'll meet you back when I get to the end of this round. All right, I believe I'm working my last half double crochet stitch of this round right here. And it doesn't hurt to always count and double check. So I'm going to start by doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Number fourteen is with the stitch marker, so I'm all good. I can stick my hook back in. <clears throat> and again, we'll be slip stitching to the starting stitch from this round. So insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. This will connect that into a loop. Remove the stitch marker. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Chain one and turn your work. 
we were just working around the outside of this puff. Now we're going to be working the opposite way along the inside of the puff. Wait, I'm going to pause the video right here just for a moment. I want to give a reminder, go ahead and measure your work so far. Measure the width and see where you're at. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my puffs are about 8 inches wide and yours might not come out exactly to 8 inches, but if it's relatively close, especially if it's on the 7.5 to 8 inch side, you will definitely have enough yarn. If it's 8.5 or 9 inches, you might end up running low on yarn to squeeze 3 puffs out of 1 skein, so you might want to go back and adjust if yours is coming out too big. Of course, I only used one skein of each color, so I was really trying to get all three puffs out of one type of skein so I can get all of that color. But if you're using more of the same type of color, you have some more playroom with if you run out of yarn right before the end of a puff, you can easily break into that next skein and finish out your puff. Okay, back to the tutorial. Again, feel for that loose slip stitch spot. You're going to be skipping over that. Mine is right here. Skip over that and locate the last stitch from the previous round and that's the stitch that you'll be starting with. Again, this is where the third loops are. This time the third loops are on the inside of the work. So we'll be skipping those third loops again and again working into the top two loops of each stitch. So insert your hook into the last stitch from the previous round. And again, we're gonna be doing a full round of all half double crochet. So continue working along this round again until you have 14 half double crochet. Now I forgot to put my stitch marker in on this round so make sure you don't forget it so you can easily count. I'm just going to skip a little bit ahead at this point because I think you guys know what to do. Again you'll be doing half double crochet into each stitch around for a total of 14 half double crochet stitches. I'm going to skip ahead and I'll meet you at the end of this round. All right, I'm just completing my slip stitch here to close up my loop. And I've now completed my third round. I went ahead and did my chain one to prep for the next round. And But first, I'm going to pause here and measure myself. And I'll show you how my measurements are turning out as well. Mine is measuring right at 8 inches wide. So I'm pretty spot on for that measurement right at eight inches. And after three rounds, I'm measuring <clears throat> roughly five and a half inches tall. And I'm going to be trying to get to eight, maybe eight and a half inches tall. With these rounds, they're so tall and thick that you do add a significant amount of height with each round. So you may not get exactly to a square, but you want to get pretty close. For me, that took five rounds total of half double crochet. We've done three. So I want you to measure and I want you to continue crocheting half double crochet rounds until you get your height as close as you can to match the width of your puff. So for me, I need to complete two more rounds. So go ahead and keep crocheting half double crochet rounds. I've completed two more rounds of half double crochet and now I'm measuring about eight and a half inches tall. So that kind of shows you what I was talking about earlier. You're not going to get exactly the same height as you have the width most likely, but you can get pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to fasten off this yarn from this puff. And before you cut your yarn off, you need to leave a certain length tail for sewing all the puffs together. So I want you to lay your yarn across the puff and then down the puff to get that length and measurement. And then I want you to triple that length that you have there. Two, three. And that's the length that you need to cut your tail off because you'll need all of that for sewing on to the puff next door. Go ahead and secure the top of your puff by pulling that loop out. Pull that yarn tail all the way through the loop. And now you'll be ready to sew in a few minutes. You can also go ahead and just tuck in that little tail at the end if you want. The yarn is has a lot of friction on itself, so if you just tuck the tail to the inside without actually weaving it in, it, you shouldn't have any problems with it poking back out. Now here's a bit of an overview of what the sewing is going to look like. We're going to be starting at the top of our puff mat. 
and working our way down. We'll be sewing all of these puffs together individually. So we're gonna start out in the top right corner and we're going to sew the top shut and then use the rest of the tail to sew next to the puff next to it. Then we'll do the same with the purple puff here. We'll sew the top and then down the side. And then the last one we'll sew the top and then you'll just weave in the tail, the extra tail instead of the side. Down to the next row, we'll be sewing the top of this coral one closed as we sew it to the blue one. Come down the side next to the pink. Sew the top of the pink closed as we're sewing it to the mulberry looking color and then down the white. And then sewing the white closed as we sew it to that teal color. And we'll keep repeating that all the way down the puff mat. You can connect as many puffs together as you want if you want to make it wider than mine or um, less puffs across than mine. That is completely up to you. Just like the puff quilt, this pattern is really flexible. And I do apologize for the lighting differences. I filmed these clips on different days, so they're going to be a little bit different. Ignore what I'm doing here. I'm going to explain what I'm doing in the next clip. <laughs> So with the tail of your puff on the top right side, you're going to stick your hook in through the first set of stitches, grab your yarn, and pull it through that first set. You don't have to grab it fancy the way that I just did there. That was just so that I could grab the yarn. You're going to do that again. Go find the next set of two stitches over, grab the yarn any way you want, not fancy, <laughs> and pull it through both sets of stitches. You're going to keep doing this until you get to the end of your puff, always going from front to back, going through the entire puff from the outside to the outside of the other side. By the time you'll have gotten to the end, you should have done this seven total times because there are 14 total stitches and you're going through um, two at the same time. So seven total times. I'm just doing my last one here. I'm gonna find a spot in the corner. You may not get through two sides of the puff. You may just get into the corner. It just depends on how exactly you end up. But go ahead and pull that through at the corner. And secure it nice and tight. Now we're gonna grab your next puff, also facing the same direction with the long tail on the upper right side. This one has not been closed up yet, but that's okay. You're gonna get to that later. Bring it over to the puff that you just sewed closed. So your first puff, the tail should be on the left side and your second puff, your tail should be on the right side. So they should be at the same corner together. You're gonna to locate the top corner kind of on the outside of your second puff. See how I'm going on the outside of the tail, not around the tail. We're going to be sewing these together right on the very sides of them. So grab a spot on the corner right on the very side of your puff. <clears throat> Insert your hook. Grab your first puff yarn tail and pull that through. We're not going to do anything with that second puff tail quite yet. We're just going to be working with this first puff tail. So my teal one. Pull that tail nice and snug so the corners are nice and snug together. Now we're gonna find a spot on the blue puff and pull through. You wanna find a spot a little bit down from the corner but not too far down, but still on that very side of your puff. Pull it nice and snug. Now we're gonna go back to this pink puff, or whichever color you wanna call this. Find a spot, ideally when you find a spot, you wanna find at least two strands of yarn. If you go through just one loop, it might not be sturdy enough, but going through two loops will make a stronger connection. Grab that first puff yarn, pull it through, and you'll see this blue yarn kind of weaved in and out of that pink puff. That's what we're going to be doing and that's kind of how far you want to go down each time you connect. You don't want to go down very far. Um, this isn't an exact science so I can't tell you exactly where to go. 
um, because it doesn't really matter, but as long as you get a nice strong connection between the two puffs, you'll be all set. So you're just gonna keep doing this, alternating between the two puffs, working your way down. All right, I skipped ahead a little bit, but now I'm down all the way to the corners. And you wanna really make sure you secure the corners together again at the bottom. So it doesn't really matter what corner you end up on. Sometimes I end up on the other one, but either way, get, get into the very corner of it and pull your yarn through. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting mine through here. There we go. Pull that all the way tight. And you'll see how my corners just aren't quite together yet. There's still that gap and that's not what you want. So I need to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull it through the very corner, kind of the bottom, if you, if you look at it from the bottom view like I am, through the corner of this pink puff. Cinch that nice and tight together. Now we're going to bring it back through the blue side to really secure this together. Find a spot maybe not quite in the corner, but a little further into the puff and pull that through. And then there you have it. You have your two puffs completely attached together. What I'm gonna do now is find another spot kind of deeper in the blue puff <clears throat> to grab my long blue tail. And I'm just gonna pull that through my puff to snip off. I'm not gonna actually weave it in. This yarn is so thick that you, it would just look really chunky if you tried to weave it in, like at the real way. Um, and this yarn also has a lot of friction on itself, so it's not really gonna like slip and slide out of your puff. So if you pull it through the middle of your puff, just get it kind of lost in there a little bit. You can take your scissors and just snip off the end of that tail. So now we're ready to move on to the next puff. We'll be doing the same thing we did with the teal one. Well, first of all, you wanna pull that yarn through to really secure your puff and not leave an open loop. I won't walk through the whole thing with you in detail because it's the exact same thing we did with the first teal puff. You'll be working across the top of your second puff to close it up. And then when you get to the end, you'll be securing the corner to your third puff, the new one, so mine will be the blue one that I would be bringing in. You'd secure those corners together and then you would go down the two puffs just like we did between the teal and the pink puff. You'll be doing the same method between the pink and the blue puff or whichever is your second and third puff. So I'm gonna skip ahead for this process because it will be the same thing. If you need to see it again, you can go back and watch the way that we did the first puff and the second puff together, it's gonna to be the same thing. So I recommend going back and looking at that. All right, so I'm ready to move on to my next row. Again, you can add as many puffs across as you would like, and you can keep doing that same method that we were just working on. But for now, I'm ready to move on to my next row. So I'm gonna bring in my next puff, which is gonna go directly below the first puff that you attached. And we're gonna sew the top of this next puff closed as we're sewing it to the bottom of the first puff we did. So for me, it's this teal puff. So I'm gonna find the very corner of my teal puff, go from inside to outside, put my hook through, grab my white yarn, and pull that through the corner. I'm gonna pull it through to be all the way snug and secure to the white corner.
Now, going from front to back, just as we always have been, same way we did the tops of these, of these puffs, we're going to be going from front to back of this white puff in the, in the very corner. Grab that white yarn and pull through. So this part is going to be the same as the puffs we did earlier. We're just adding another step in between things. Pull that nice and secure. Now we're going to flip up to look at the bottom of the teal puff again and find the next kind of chain hole over from the corner. Just going into the, the bottom of the teal from again from the inside towards the outside. Grab that white yarn and pull through. And then locating the next two set of stitches over on the white puff. Insert from front to back. Grab the yarn and pull it through. So we're going to continue doing these same steps all the way across the puff. So finding the next spot over in the blue, pulling it through, finding the next spot over on the white, pull it through, and you'll keep repeating this motion until the very end. Again, you should have, you should have done it roughly seven times because especially because we've started with seven chains and you're going through all seven chains along the bottom of that teal puff and then through seven sets of stitches on the white puff. So keep doing this and I'll meet you at the corner. All right, I'm just working through the last set of stitches on my white puff. I believe I've already gone through the last spot on my teal puff. Pulling it through. And now to extra secure the corner, I'm gonna go up from bottom to top, up through the white and the teal puff on the very corner, grab my yarn and pull it through both puffs. This will just really secure that corner together. There we have it. So let me check my, my puff real quick. I'm doing this reverse, so I need to do my pink one next. <clears throat> and the same thing, this pink one hasn't been closed up yet. My tail is going to be on my right side. The tails will be matching corners together with the pink and the white together. And this is going to be no different than what we did on the first row. It will be locating spots on the very sides of the next puff and sewing it to the sides of the puff we just attached. So no different than what we did on the first row. Maybe if I can get my hook to go through, we'll see. Mm, doesn't look promising. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead a bit. You attach the sides of these two puffs together and then I'll meet you back after this part. All right, my white and pink puffs are nice and secure together. And now we're gonna be attaching the light pink puff to the dark pink puff. And this is the same as we did when we attached the white and the teal together. We'll be sewing the pink clothes as we attach it to the dark pink. And then we'll bring in this mustard color puff and attach the pink and the mustard together with the tails on the right side, of course. Lastly, we'll be sewing the mustard puff closed as we attach it to that blue puff above it. Then when you get to the end of that, you'll just be able to sew in the end of your mustard because you don't have anything next to it. Okay, I apparently didn't make my clip long enough to explain the end of the puff mat, but this is essentially what you're going to be doing for the entirety of the puffy floor mat. Once you finish this row, you'll move on to the next row and the next one and the next one until it reaches the size that you're trying to achieve. Again, I did three puffs across, as you see here, by seven rows long. So I would do this for another five more times. 
So, and then make sure you tuck in all your ends. You can weave them into your puff and they're not gonna come out because of the friction. And yeah, then you'll be done with your puff mat. I would love to see pictures of your creations. So if you're on social media, make sure you post and tag me in it so that I can see your beautiful work. All of my socials are linked in the description box above. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have for you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Let me know what you thought of this video. Leave some feedback for me in the comment section. Bye.